Hey guys, it's Spiros from the Self-Help Photographer. It is Tuesday, and of course we're answering questions today, and I've had a lot of questions about how to get a tack sharp photograph. Now, before we can talk about sharpness, we really need to understand what we mean by tack sharp. And it's typically defined as a photograph that has maximum sharpness and detail to it. But that that's like saying, a sharp photo is a sharp photo. It doesn't actually tell us anything. So the first thing I want to do is define tack sharpness. And a tack sharp photo is a photo that has maximum sharpness and detail on the plane of focus and within the depth of field. The most important parts of that definition are the plane of focus and the depth of field. See, in every photograph that you take, there is a very specific area that has the potential to be sharp. And what I mean by that is there is a very specific area of the photograph that will be in focus. But no matter what you do, anything outside of that area is going to be out of focus. Think of it as a box, as a sharpness box within the area of your photograph, within the scene that you're taking. And anything that is in that box will be able to be sharp and in focus. And with the plane of focus and the depth of field, we can actually define the size and the shape of this sharpness box. That will allow us to put specifically what we want in focus in that area when we compose the photograph. Let's start with the depth of field. We already know that the depth of field is the distance between the nearest object and the farthest objects that are in focus in our photograph. And that's an actual physical distance in the scene. The cool thing is that we can calculate that distance. Now, I'm not going to take you through the actual math of doing this. Rather, we're going to use the DOF Master online calculator. To calculate the depth of field, we need to know a few things. Number one, we need to know the distance from the camera to the subject. Number two, we need to know the camera that we're actually using. Number three, we need to know the aperture that the lens is set to for that photograph. And for the fourth thing, we need to know the focal length of the lens. And when I say the focal length, we actually need to know the specific focal length that it is zoomed to if you're using a zoom lens. If you're using a prime lens, like say a 50 millimeter, the answer is 50 millimeters no matter what. But if you're using say a 17 to 50 millimeter lens and you're zoomed to 24 millimeters, you need to input 24 millimeters. Here's what the DOF Master webpage looks like. And you can see I've selected my camera and I'm using the 60 millimeter lens for this example. I have the aperture set at f11 and I put the subject distance at 10 feet. Now the subject distance is something that you'll need to measure out. And you do that by measuring the distance from the back of the camera to the subject that you are focused on. And when you input that information, you get a bunch of information on the right hand side. And I'm gonna walk you through what all these numbers mean. The first is just repeating to you the subject distance, which is 10 feet. The next bit of information is the awesome information. This is our actual depth of field area. It tells us that the near limit to our depth of field is 8.49 feet. Now what that means is everything starting at 8.49 feet from the camera will be in focus. Anything that's closer to the camera than 8.9 feet will be out of focus. And then from 8.49 feet, you go all the way to 12.2 feet. That is the far limit or the back side of our depth of field area. This would be the front and the back of that sharpness box that I mentioned. This is awesome because now you know. Now you know exactly what area of the scene you are about to photograph will be in focus, meaning you can make sure that the stuff important to your photo and your composition will be tack sharp. Now these next two numbers show you where the depth of field area is in relationship to the subject. See, your subject is always in the middle of the depth of field area. So when you focus on a subject, the depth of field will extend in front of your subject and behind your subject. So in this example, the depth of field area extends 1.51 feet in front of the subject and 2.17 feet behind the subject. So you have some room to work in the composition when you know where your subject is and you know what the depth of field area looks like. Now I mentioned the focal plane earlier on and that's something that's important to talk about because the focal plane impacts how the depth of field area is shaped or oriented. See the focal plane is the same as the subject distance. Wherever the camera is focused is where the focal plane is. And the focal plane is always parallel to the camera sensor. That means when you tilt 
the camera and move the camera, you move the depth of field area with it, okay? And what happens is if you move it in a particular way, you might move something out of your sharpness box without realizing. Here's an example, a photograph of a piece of paper that I took with the piece of paper and the camera sensor parallel to each other. And you can see that everything is sharp and in focus. But now I've tilted the camera and taken the same photograph and you can see that I've got just this narrow band that is in focus because I moved the plane of focus and where the plane of focus and the piece of paper intersect is where I have sharpness. So how do you use this practically when you're taking a photograph? Well, let's say I want to take a photograph of my lens cap and I want to make sure that all of the letters of the word Canon are entirely in focus. When I take the photograph, I'm going to have the lens cap laying on a table and I'm going to point the camera at it at an angle. And when we do that, we know that the plane of focus is going to intersect at an angle to the lens cap. We know that the letters are about a half an inch tall. So that tells me that I need a depth of field area from front to back that is at least a half an inch wide. I'm shooting with my Canon 60D in the 60 millimeter lens. So we go to the DOF Master web calculator and we punch in 60 millimeters with the Canon 60D selected. We'll start with an aperture of F20 and we're gonna put a subject distance of six inches because I wanna be close to the lens cap. When I do that, it tells me that my depth of field is 0.12 inches and I need a depth of field of 0.5 inches. We know that that's not wide enough. So we need to change something. I'm going to start by just changing the aperture to the smallest aperture available on my camera, which is f32. And when I do that, the depth of field area widens a little bit. It goes from 0.12 inches to 0.19 inches, but that's still not wide enough. So right now, I know that I cannot get a wide enough depth of field area with the camera positioned this close to the subject. So I need to back the camera away. When I pull the camera back to 12 inches, my depth of field area increases to 0.99 inches. And this is almost twice as big as the area that I need. This is fantastic. Now we're getting somewhere. Now I know I can take this shot and I can get all of the letters on my lens cap in focus. Now I could actually move closer than this 12 inches because I'm at 0.99, but for reasons that I will explain in next week's video, which is part two of how to get a tack sharp photo, it's not a good idea to shoot a photo at the smallest aperture available on your lens. So I'm going to change the aperture to F16. And when I do that, I get a depth of field area of 0.5 inches. This is exactly what I need, but I want a little bit of extra room. So I'm going to go to F18, which gives me a depth of field area of 0.56 inches. With that, I know for certain that I can take a photograph of this lens cap and I can have the entirety of the word and the letters Canon completely in focus. The whole idea is that we can figure out the precise area of the image that will be in focus so that the important subjects will actually be in focus in our image. That's the first step to getting a tack sharp photo because you can do all the other stuff that we're going to talk about in part two, which has to do with shutter speeds and apertures worth using and the sweet spot on your lens and tripods and all that kind of stuff. But none of that will do you any good if the things you want in focus are not inside your sharpness box. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. Before I go, though, not only can you do this on the web, but there are apps for Androids and iPhones. You can download programs for your laptop. There are lots of ways that you can calculate depth of field on the go. Let me know down in the comments, are you using a depth of field calculator? If you are, which one? Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, use the links in the description if you have any questions about photography, and most importantly, you know what to do. Get out there with your depth of field calculator and take some damn photos. I will see you guys on Thursday. I am in the sharpness box.